Many high school seniors this morning are considering college acceptance letters. About 85% of an estimated 3 million high school seniors this year are expected to head to college. Most students have until May 1st to commit. They will be among more than 20 million students enrolled in colleges across the country. Julie Lithcott Hames is a former dean at Stanford University. She hosts, she hosts the Slate College Admissions podcast, Getting In. Welcome back to the table. Thank you for having me. So if, you're, if you are in fact admitted by a number of colleges, yes. uh, you need to do what to get behind the gloss of the sort of status. Exactly. So if you're admitted to a lot of schools, you have some sense of what they offer, whether they offer the major you're interested in, public, private, large, medium, small. What's key about now, these next couple of weeks, is you've got to visit a campus you're serious about. If you're looking at two or three options that really excite you, there's nothing that replaces the value of the visit. Why? You develop a sense of, can I be myself there? Do I like these kids? Do I want to be in these classrooms? Do I want to be in these labs and on these playing fields? That's, you're informing your gut about Am I going to thrive here? It's four years in the life of a developing human. It's a long time. It's, a, it's about a whole lot more than uh, the things you can measure quantitatively. So a little bit of saturation helps. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. U.S. News & World Report has been a fixture for decades in terms of ranking the schools. But you say there's a better indicator in terms of what it means to get a good education. Yeah, U.S. News' ranking actually has nothing to do with the quality of the undergraduate education a student will receive there. The best undergraduate education comes in a place where faculty are motivated to teach and mentor undergraduates. So how do you figure that out? How do you know if that school does that? Well, there are a lot of other uh ranking booklets you can look at. Uh, there's a great book called The Alumni Factor that reports on alumni outcomes. Mm. Uh, for instance, from that you can learn that uh, 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 graduates of the University of Maryland, with, uh, for example. Um, like Gail King. Like yeah. Gail King. <laughs> um, have incredibly high net worth. And um, yeah. you might not think that. You think, oh, that's a but, state yeah. school. It's not as prestigious, maybe, as a brand name. Didn't Kevin that Plank I'm more also familiar go to the University of Maryland? I think the uh, uh, Under Armour. Makes yeah, sense. that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was right in that area. So yeah. But yeah. back to, can I just say, for the issue of small class, for mm -hmm. engaging with faculty, you want to know that there are small classes offered. So one of the questions you ask when you go on your tours is, are, your, are my class is going to be taught by TAs, or am I going to get access in a small seminar setting to faculty? And you see that when you're no. there as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, you, the financial uh, aspect obviously means a lot to so many people, and, and you think you're getting financial aid, but that's not always exactly, you don't exactly know what you're getting. How do you figure that part of it out? So most families are um, contending with financial aid, and they're looking at packages right now, and here's what you need to pay attention to. There's free money and loans. You want as much free money as possible. That's grants and scholarships. That's money you do not have to pay back. Loans, of course, contribute to this burgeoning student loan debt we read so much about and hear so much about, okay? So you want to compare, when you're looking at the offers, what is the actual bottom line to us in terms of free money? You know, what are we going to have to then fork out from our pocketbooks and take by way of loans? That I'm, makes a huge difference. I'm asking this question on behalf of Nora. How do you raise an adult? <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. I've written a book on that subject, Charlie. Um, you know, you realize that this is a young human unfolding in front of you, that they are their own human. They are to live their own life. We can advise and guide and we must. We must care for them and nurture them. But we have to get our egos out of the way. In the college admission context, too many of us parents are saying, well, I would feel better. I would feel prouder if my kid went to some big brand name school when in fact that kid is going to thrive at hundreds of colleges in this incredible nation where we have a bounty of higher education opportunities. What about, it's the interesting sort of the flip side, what about the kids that don't get into the school that they want? How can parents then help them sort of move forward in their educational process? Well, parents have to walk the walk. Too often we've got the lip service we pay to, oh, it doesn't matter where you go, honey, but secretly we're always wearing that Stanford sweatshirt or that Duke sweatshirt or whatever the case may be. We have to actually believe that a great education is to be had at a couple hundred schools in this country, a great education. Right. There are 2,800 schools here in the United States. We do higher ed better than anybody, okay? Here's a great right. example. There's a kid I know who's gotten a full ride to an honors college program at University of Louisville. Fantastic. Do it. Free, great education, but maybe the family's feeling like, well, but it's not the brand name we hoped for. Right. Set that aside. Go for the great education, particularly if it's offered free. Georgetown, right. Michigan. I felt like we just had to get to you had to get in there. <laughs> Julie, thank you. Thank Thanks you for so having much. me. I appreciate it.